Hey guys, this is Matt for Creative, and today we're looking at what may be my favorite instant camera, my most favorite that I've ever used here. This is the Lomography Lomo Instant Automat Glass Version Magellan Edition because of the color scheme. But basically what it is, it's an instant camera that uses um, Instax Mini format from Lomography and it is a glass lens instant camera. It has produced some of the crispest pictures that I've ever seen on such a tiny format, and <clears throat> I have loved using this. And what I think is the most important is you can make things extremely crisp, but once you learn how to use it, you can make things look artistic. You can make things look vintage, you can make things look different. Kind of like that vintage Polaroid vibe, but that's so uncontrollable, even with the Now Plus and all that stuff where you can like adjust settings. This one, once you learn it, you can either go for the crisp pictures or like that artsy kind of effect. And I, you may have seen the photos that I took earlier, right before this video started, and that was from a party. I think a lot of them came out really, really good. Uh, pause it and kind of look back on each. Unfortunately, the real photos are back with people. I just gave them out to everybody just because I had such a good time. But this camera <clears throat> is my favorite. There is one thing I just want to say negative before we continue. These little things here are from an old Polaroid camera as a neck harness. This does not include a neck harness even though it has this. Out of the box, when you first buy it, include that. I remember talking about Polaroid and saying that I really didn't like that they had cheap little neck harnesses, but you gotta say, something for this size, something for a instant camera, you can't put it anywhere else. It's gonna go around your neck. It can't be on a loop like uh, the new Polaroid cameras are. That's just like, you can't, you can't walk around with that. You can't really move around with that. It has to have a neck strap, that's what I found. So I'm guessing at this point, you're gonna have to buy your own neck strap afterwards because maybe this is going in a giant jacket pocket, but that's really the only negative that I have about this camera. <clears throat> and one other note here is that it does not take uh, like traditional AAA and AA batteries. It takes the CR2 batteries or C2R batteries. You're gonna need two of them, so make sure you have these on hand because they are not included in the box. So this is the camera here. To turn it on, you're going to, and it has cool effect at the top here. You turn on here by twisting. You can see the lights in the back are on, but what I think is really cool, and for a while, because I don't look at, ma at manuals, I don't look at like reviews and interest, like I, I do this and I try to figure things out on my own just like you do. I was like, how do you know how many pictures you have left, how many you're taken? Look at the top of the camera here. I thought that these were like heat vents, but as the, like this is a full pack of camera film in here right now. And as it goes down, one will go down, one will go down until at the very end it flashes when you turn it on so you know that you have nothing on the inside. And as we begin here, I'll show you how to focus here in a second. I'm gonna take a quick picture here. Um, we have a lot of studio light on my face here, so let me choose something that's kind of like, <clears throat> this is basic. I'm gonna take a picture of my hand. And I'm doing the close focus so we can see some background blur. So we're gonna see how this comes out in a moment. But let me talk about using the camera here before we look at the other pictures. So if you see here on the top, you're going to turn this to different little points and you'll see that this is kind of like the infinity focus. This is the focus that you'll have for things like kind of far away. Now this one here, which one is this? This says 0.6 meters. This is gonna be kind of like, <clears throat> honestly, you and somebody else in a picture because this has a wide lens, wider than your current Instax, like 12 or 11. And I love that because the way that I 
personally see the world is I'm getting information from everywhere. I know a lot of other people like tighter lenses, maybe even 50 millimeter lenses, just because that's just what their focus is. For me, I don't have that kind of focus. So I love seeing everything and I love, just personally love a wider lens. So this is gonna be, honestly, um, maybe about this far away. You're gonna hold this out here. You're gonna kind of get this distance between you because I measured with like a little ruler. Can you see that there? And that's what it's gonna be. Now, if you want a super close, it's not gonna be out here because if you take this picture with this super close, it's gonna be blurry. So you're gonna to have to actually maybe do half an arm's length. What I've kind of done is uh, imagine that the camera's here at this elbow and it's gonna be about this distance here. So let's see if I got that right. We're gonna hit the shutter button here. Now I hope that that is correct. It should be a very sharp image because it's really close. We'll take those, take a look at those two at the very end. Oh, there is one oddity on here. I didn't know where the shutter release was. And can you tell where it is? It's not this because that's to actually to turn the camera off. What's this? Is this for selfies? It is, yes. It is also the shutter button. So it's something that's a little bit confusing to me because you're going to maybe frame yourself up here. I can see myself, I'm holding this. And actually, this is something that I've really liked. The body of the camera is kind of this thick, but then you have this slimmer portion, which you can actually hold onto with like your back fingers, put a pinky underneath here, and you can actually get like a good grip and then finally take the picture. But because you're putting your thumb on here, the selfie mirror is gonna be a little bit smudgy. So you have to make sure to clean that off but here at least I know where I am and it has a nice wide angle because it's a wide angle camera and I got myself here and pictures been gonna be taken. But that's just interesting. If you're like, where's the shutter? That is where it is. Now in the back you have more ways to kind of figure out the camera. I haven't used anything. The only thing I've been using is turning the flash on off because this, um, let's see, this is a 38 millimeter camera. It has an F 4.5 lens, which is, it doesn't sound that great, but for an instant camera, a film camera, that is really good at absorbing light. And you'll see how this does with like really low light here in a moment. But this camera is, is consistent. Now, the only thing that this shares with other instant cameras from Lomography, which is a little bit of a disappointment, is that, do you see the backing here? Let's see if this focuses. It's a little bit raised. And there are kind of like artistic effect light leaks on either side of the image in some of these here. We'll kind of see the, we'll kind of see that when we review the images. It's something where a, another stabilizer this way would have really helped to not make it jut out because it seems like that tiny little jut out is doing something, <clears throat> but it is, um, worse on the other instant cameras from Lomography. It is a little bit better on this one. So let's actually turn the camera off. And how do you do that? You're like, oh, it's kind of locked. You hold this button down here and continue the rotation. Now the camera is off. It does have a lens cap where if you put a battery inside, you can use that as a remote shutter, which I think is pretty interesting. Something I may not use, but hey, at least it's something that you can use. This has a flat bottom here, so you can rest it here. You can see yourself in the selfie mirror and you can kind of see where you are and maybe use that if you really want to set that down. Another good thing is tripod mount on, uh, <clears throat> on the bottom here. So if you really want to set this up and keep it stable, you can and then use remote shutter and then you're fine. So let's start looking at the random images. Honestly, the images that I took at the party, I think were a greater, just like overall vibe of what this camera can do. This is literally the first image I took, and this is me learning. So it's a wide angle lens. You can see it's not exactly um, in focus because this was me going all the way out and taking it with the closest focus, thinking that's what I needed where I really should have pulled it in. It's just a little bit, see it's a little bit blurry, but hey, the colors, and look at that background. It is actually blurred. That background is nice and blurred. So let's see, we're gonna put this here. 
Next one is me learning how to kind of get closer to the camera and you can see that that's nice background little bokeh in the back and me, I'm nicely lit with that flash. I like this image a lot. It's crisp, it is really, really crisp. I am so happy at how crisp these images are. Now this is me with like kind of that mid-range lens learning more that you, once you stick yourself out like this, you can still get that crispness, crisp, not crisp, crisp. Oh my God, I can't even talk right now. Not Christmas, but crispness. And a nice background blur too. And you can see how wide that lens is. I'm a huge fan of wide and ultra wide. Now, <clears throat> this is me. And I believe that there is no flash, but I use a giant window that I was next to here. And that's me just absorbing all that light. Look at those natural skin tones. I think this one looks really, really good. I do have to learn though, that when I take a picture, I shouldn't be here. I should be more here. So when I aim the lens here, it shouldn't be like at me. It should be a little bit up. So there's not so much empty wasted space here. Because again, wide, ultra wide kind of lens. Um, let's continue on. So this is my very first ever outside shot. Nice and wide. You can see some vignetting here, but that's okay. I think this looks good. It was a cloudy kind of day. That's just what the vibes were at that time. This is inside of a little shop with no flash. So you can even see with no flash, you're getting light. Um, I don't think I got the focus right on this one. This one was a little bit blurry. This is again, me learning the camera on the first day. I chose not to put flash on this thinking that it would fill, but there was so much backlight. This did need flash and this was pretty close. It's sharp, but it is not exactly what I needed. Now this is just me super close with the jersey. Flash was on, so you can see it's a little bit overexposed in the center, but I think it's a nice artsy little pic. It almost looks like something, some pictures I used to take on Instagram um, of just my jersey and it had like a filter on it. This is me getting super close to myself and using a flash. And again, it's nice, crisp and distinct. I'm so happy with that. And I can't wait to use this for more. This is my favorite drink, which was now discontinued. Focus, just me trying to get as close to something as I personally can that wasn't my own face and trying to get that nice background blur. And something that I really like is the tone of the flash makes everything kind of white balance, but that usually means the back lights, whatever they are, they get warm. I really love warm tones. So while you're color balanced, the back becomes a warmer tone in most cases. And you can see those in those party shots because I thought they looked very warm and homey while the people caught in the flash, they were just, they were, I think, color balanced properly. Now this is one, no flash whatsoever. It's moody. It's a moody image. It's me just like extending my arm out there, but I like how it has a background blur. I'm not perfectly lit but it's just like a moody, it, I like this, this vibe. I like that there is a background blur. I really, really like this camera. This is the desk where I'm sitting on. I have so much garbage on this stuff right now. I've been kind of reorganizing stuff and just things have piled up. That's with the flash. You can see again, vignetting here on the corners. It's a wide lens. Now this may look like basically nothing Let's see if this exposes this properly. But this is every light out, every light in my apartment off. And those are the, the city lights. That's a city building outside. And I think it did well absorbing that light, not kind of juddering around when I, when I took a picture. I think this is a good job showing that it can work well in a low light situation. And this is not like an artifact. This is like a mood light that I have in my it's like one of those, like, it's that light in the corner. It's that light that casts, and it's not like an imperfection on the film. This is uh, one of my cats, very close up picture, flashed him right in the eyes. This is me again. I think this one came out pretty well. I think this, this will do well for uh, portrait photography. 
it's very crisp and it's something that you can actually scan if you have a scanner. Uh, another picture of my cat again. I was kind of like moving away from him as he was moving towards me. And you can see because of that, these little light streaks, that's kind of the artistic nature where this is artistic, but your subject is clear and in focus. This is my other cat. That was Ninja, this is Mia. She's just sleeping and of course I'm flashing her and I'm giving her like issues just because she's trying to relax and I'm trying to take pictures. This is outside of my window with no flash. I think it looks beautiful. I think it, it does well absorbing the light, making it contrasty, but giving you detail in what it is. You can see that's a city street. I think it does really, really well. I, yeah. And I know the, the tones are kind of greenish and blue, but it seems warm to me. Um, this is down the street. I couldn't hold my hand properly and without the flash you can kind of see the artifacts of like my shake when I took it, but that's down the street. This one here is one picture that I took at a Brooklyn Nets game. I think I used a flash and I probably shouldn't have. I probably should have just not flashed it, but you can see that there is, that's the stadium, that's a person. And I was, I was in cheap seats, so there wasn't really much to see at all anyway. Um, same game, I don't think I used the flash, and it kind of got more of the, um, of the court. And I think it did a good job of getting the court. Again, it's a wide angle lens, and when you're sitting far away, you gotta be close to have like maximum effect. Oh, this is one that came out. This is the only one that I think should have came out crisp, did not. I had the flash on. I think I had this exactly where I needed to be um, distance wise and on the, the right focus. And I don't know why it came out so blurry. Maybe my hand was shaking, maybe something, but it should have been much, much clearer. And that's a lens cap in my mouth. You'll see it in the next picture too. This is unfortunate because it says the Brooklyn Nets behind me. And I thought that would have been really cool. This is the last picture that we have before we look at the ones we just took because I wanted to let them process. And that's me with a lens cap in my mouth and like a, a, that's a hoodie around me and that's my arm and yeah. So that's it. I think that this is good. You have to learn, you have to go through some of these images. Um, okay. All right, so hand a little bit overexposed. I have to say honestly, but you can see this is one of those ones where I took it this hard. You can see that there is background bokeh. I like that. It gives this depth. And you know what? The camera itself right now is kind of auto-correcting because it looks more blown out in real life. It's giving more detail here um, in the camera. And I think that looks good. I think that looks good. And last but not least, this is me literally right now. I think I got the crispness. I think I got the right focus and the right distance. And that's just me. That's me taking this at the very beginning of this video. I think this is a good picture. It shows how clean these images can be. I do need to learn, again, to tilt this down to not have so much wasted space in the top, but I think this does really, really well. It is my favorite camera, um, instant camera right now, and that's literally all formats. That's Polaroid, that's uh, Instax Mini, that's wide, that's everything. And again, it's a glass uh, lensed camera. It's something that every single maker um, of infant, instant photography should have. Just have a glass lens. It makes miles of difference. It really does. So thank you so much for taking a look at all these images and this camera. This is a hard recommend. Just make sure you have the batteries, which are CR2 batteries, and that you get something as a neck strap or a wristlet. Neck strap, I really think you have to do the neck strap. But for me, look at this. I think it's a good looking camera. And moreover, it takes beautiful images. I think that is the most important thing here. So this does get my personal recommendation as my favorite instant camera right now. Let's get that hero shot for 
YouTube. Ooh, that looks good. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget you can put everything in the comment section below, all comments and questions. Um, on Instagram at m8b9. You can email me at matt8b9 at gmail.com. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.